Dear colleagues, welcome to this uh, new program of the ESOU section of uh, the European Association of Urology. Uh, this uh, program is online, available, and we will uh, discuss today the issues and the hot topics in prostate cancer. For that, I have invited uh, next to me three uh, brilliant speakers. The first uh, of them is uh, Professor Nicolas Motet, chairman of the Prostate Cancer Guidelines of the EAU. He's an academic professor in France, in Saint-Etienne. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, I have asked Alberto Bossi, uh, who is a radiation oncologist from uh, Gustave Roussy, uh, to come and to discuss uh, some uh, cases with us. Thank you for uh, coming. And Stephen Jonio from uh, the uh, academic department of Leuven in Belgium. Uh, and uh, we will uh, go uh, through three different topics. So let's start now with the first topic uh, with uh, Professor Nicola Motet, and we will have a room uh, for discussion uh, all together. Thank you, Morgan. So the topic will be what's coming up in metastatic hormonal sensitive prostate cancer. And to make it a little bit lively, I'll start with ask, asking questions to my dear friends. Combined systemic treatment in M1 disease, you all know the literature that's available. Do you believe it's standard of care for all M1 situations? Or should it be reserved for newly diagnosed M1 disease only? or should it be restricted to some relapsing M1 patients? Stephen, maybe? Well, I think it's not yet standard of care for all situations, so I would reserve it mostly for newly diagnosed patients, uh, also depending on availability yet, because not all of these drugs are available yet. So, and, and I would really restrict it to a selected number of patients with recurrent disease, but uh, mostly primary disease. Alberto, your opinion? Yeah, indeed. I think this is the real group of patients that may benefit from the combined systemic treatment. We, do, we don't have solid data about relapsing ones. There are two very different category of patients, I guess. Nicola, what is uh, saying the literature? Well, it's probably partly correct, but partly wrong. Let's say wh where we are. We know from a Cochrane systematic review that adding docetaxel to ADT improves survival. There's no discussion. There's clear evidence for that. Let me highlight the fact that most patients included in those trials were newly diagnosed with one disease. We have exactly the same benefit with Abby on top of ADT. And again, most patients were in fact newly diagnosed with one disease. Later on came, as you know, two other drugs. Both were positive, APA, ENZA, and again, most patients were newly diagnosed with one disease. So at the end of the day, all the trials are positive. So you have to consider all the trials together as a whole, they are positive. If you go for subgroups, be very careful. Every time you go for subgroups, it's negative. The problem is there are so few patients included as relapsing compared to newly diagnosed, then you cannot say it's not yet ready for relapsing. Probably, as Stephen said, for a very small subgroup of patients with the highest risk, that say they relapse a year after a radical treatment, probably they should be considered as upfront M1 disease. But standard of care should be for newly diagnosed. The second topic is, is there's a clear evidence regarding the optimal first-line systemic modality? And the question again is, yes, an ARTA is clearly a superior compared to chemo. Yes, the opposite, that is six cycle of dose is clearly superior to an ARTA, or no? They seems to be equal in terms of efficacy. Alberto, what is your uh, feeling? I, I will go for answer number three. Uh, for, for what we know up to now, this seems to really be equal in terms of efficacy. Yeah, I'm perfectly in line with what Alberto says. You would agree? Well, they are a little bit boring because they seems to be on exactly the same line yeah. despite some things. Let me highlight where we are. I start with this one. This is a a comparison of two experimental arms in Stampede, where at the same time two experimental arms were run, and they compared on individual data the outcome of patients treated with Abby on top of, of ADT or Dose on top of ADT, and you can see on the left, the survival seems to be exactly the same. It's not a randomized trial, it's a comparison of two experimental arms. So they seem to be correct, except recently there was a so-called formal metallysis published suggesting that maybe AB plus ADT might be better compared to DOSE plus ADT. Be careful, this is a comparison of trials. 
that are included and the meta-analysis is done on the absolute results on the trial and not on the individual patient's results. So are you saying that we cannot trust this forest plot? It has to be taken into very, very careful and probably... And to read between the lines. It's, you, you really need to read between the lines and probably the best evidence is the previous slide, the Matt Sidis paper, when it comes from individual data. Okay. So be very careful. So I must accept they are absolutely right. Both treatment in terms of efficacy are equal. It's painful to admit it, but they are right. Yeah, it's so um, a really bit painful, but it's, it's correct. Okay, next step. Next question is... You know that Enzymet is a randomized trial showing the benefit of adding enzalutamide on top of ADT, and the trial was negative when, when using on top of this docetaxel. In your view, is this a clear signal not to combine two different systemic modalities on top of ADT, or do you believe it's too early to draw any clear conclusion that, or Even worse, is it a signal not to combine a local treatment or to the primary with a combined systemic treatment modality? So, Stephen, what do you think? Well, I, I think clearly the Enzymet trial showed that there is no point combining docetaxel with enzalutamide. And, and since you just showed Matt Seitz slides, uh, it's not Enza, I know it's not Enza, but docetaxel and any uh, new androgen receptor mediator uh, will probably give similar results. And the Enzamet trial is a, one that clearly shows that combining both is not giving any benefit. On top of that, there is a, an excess of toxicity if you combine both treatments. So for me, clearly, don't combine systemic treatments. Alberto? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I do agree with you because <laughs> the real most important conclusion, in my opinion, of the enzyme trial is about toxicity. Yeah. So we have to be very, very careful when you don't have a, a clear benefit in terms of overall survival, in terms of big endpoints like those ones, you have to, to look at toxicity. And indeed, the data on toxicity are in my opinion, very clear. So I have just a, a, a quick remark about the third option here. Mm -hmm. Is that a signal not to combine a local treatment with a combined systemic treatment? This is a big question mark. Yeah. And this, I think, should be peaceful. Nicola, do you have the feeling that the, the data from this trial are mature enough to draw any conclusion? Well, these are the data. These are the data. As you know, on top, the trial is positive. And the bottom, you have the patient that already treated, received docetaxel upfront. Roughly 50% of the all, pay, all the population on the right without docetaxel. Clearly, there is a difference. Be very careful. The median follow-up is quite short. And probably the signal is do not use them now. It doesn't mean that with a prolonged follow-up, we might reach the same conclusion. The conclusion might be a little bit different. But the message is very clear, as Stephen pointed out very clearly. Do not combine systemic treatment. But by no means enzymes sh shows that treating the primary has any effect. We don't know. And probably Jetuk, the PEACE-1 trial will be the first trial to answer, maybe to answer this question. But clearly the message is do not combine systemic treatments. And finally, this is a very provocative question for both of you. A patient with a negative bone scan and negative CT, but with bone metastasis seen on PET PSMA. By mistake or by chance, you did a PSMA and you see four vertebral spots and two ribs. What do you do offer to this guy? A combined systemic treatment, ADT plus something? A local treatment plus a systemic, if needed, should be standard of care, or a combined local modality plus a combined systemic treatment. So Alberto, what is your opinion? Well, this is a, a case that we see more and more in our daily practice yeah. because patients are asking for more exams. PSMA is, you know, very, uh, very frequently done in those group of patients. If we stick to the result of the Stampede uh, trial, mm -hmm. checking if local treatment had some impact, Uh, on those patients presenting with M1 disease, you have to admit that bone metastases were only uh, diagnosed based on, on, on scintigraphy. And so this should not, the fact of having had the PSMA should not impact on your clinical decision. This is, in, in my opinion, the most important uh, point. Okay, Stephen, briefly, anything to add? 
Well, yes, don't, don't blindly trust what you see in a pet piece MA scan because there's a, also a lot of false positives. And we only make decisions that there is a clear correlation between the pet imaging and any other imaging. And if there's a correlation between both, we always ask a radiologist to very specify, spe and if you don't know here in this case, I would first go for an MRI, for instance, of the, of the actual skeleton uh, before making any decisions. And I, I do agree. Just okay. stick to the, don't do PET scans in these situations. Well, once again, I must, it's painful because again, they agree and I agree with them. It's clear that PET PSMA is much more sensitive and specific compared to bone scan and CT scan. But re remember, if it's bone scan and CT scan are negative, the patient must receive a form of local treatment and based on the risk, on the, on the risk itself, combined with a short or long-term systemic treatment. Do not consider this as a high-risk disease. It's not the high-risk classification. So probably in this case, it's completely useless to have done a PET-PSMA, even if it's more sensitive. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.